still playing Doki Doki Literature Club with my friends. Welcome back. Let's get into it. I think last time I uh, just had just written a poem for Chieko, another one. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Gerald! Yo, Chieko. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to be to you being in the club, that's all. Apparently I'm not used to reading lines off the computer either. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. <laughs> Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Huh? But that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Chieko? Huh? Why that, all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Um... Chieko nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Chieko. That's not fair! How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming in the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. There's one more thing. You're always hungry, and so that only leaves the one option. Come on, dude, just buy her a snack. Chieko loves it when I buy things for her. It's the easiest way to impress a girl is just get her something she likes. This guy is such a dick to this girl. She's obviously interested in him, and he's totally ignoring her. How do you expect to get a girlfriend if you won't even buy her a snack from the vending machine? What? I give up! Don't make me feel guilty! If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. This guy's an asshole. <laughs> Yukiri suddenly giggles. Huh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Oh! I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yukiri! Tell Jiro to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Chieko. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got to absorb it into my book. Oh. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yukiri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That. Still, coming from you, Chieko. I guess there's a little, little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Chieko knows exactly what she's doing. Like I said, Chieko acts like a ditz, but she knows how to manipulate people. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Mitsuki into making them! Come on, give me more credit than that, Chieko. <laughs> okay, that's not fair. He really wasn't going to come, even with the cupcakes. <laughs> yeah! Out of nowhere, something smacks Chieko in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Huh? A, a cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Chieko glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution! Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> but Mitsuki, that's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Chieko hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Chieko rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mm. Chieko suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Mitsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, uh, yours looks really good too, Mitsuki. Can I try it? Jeez, beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. 
<laughs> Chieko gets out of her seat and goes behind Mitsuki, then wraps her arms around her. That jeez! I get it, I get it! Cookie still in hand, Mitsuki reaches up to nudge Chieko off of her. Um. Chieko suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Mitsuki's cookie. Uh, hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouth full, Chieko trots away to safety. Yukiri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes! Kizana, can you tell Chieko- Huh? Mitsuki glances around. Kizana isn't in the club room. Ugh! Where's Kizana anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Huh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Well, I wasn't going to be the one to say it, but if Yukiri's saying it, then I can just agree with her. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Uh? Kizana chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Uh, uh, boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Kizana quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it, since I was practicing piano. Kizana doesn't play piano, she plays the violin. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Kizana. Uh, I don't, really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Kizana. That's... Kizana looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Jiro. Kizana smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So... I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I choose to leave out Chieko's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Mitsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Chieko somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yukiri is back to her book and Mitsuki disappeared into the closet. Mitsuki's in the closet? I didn't know that. Jiro! Jiro! Chieko suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival is coming up? Me and Kizana are gonna make some posters and stuff, so I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Kizana, we'll be back soon. Oh, are you going with Jiro to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Oh, but I wanted to go. As much as it pains me to say, Kizana, Chieko did ask me first. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper too, okay? Okay! Ready, Jiro? Yep, let's go. Chieko and I exit the club room. I follow behind as Chieko hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm ta taking a kid to the mall or something. I wouldn't mind taking Chieko to the mall. Chieko finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Chieko, what exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? Uh, what did I just do? <laughs> okay, hold on. What exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? Okay. I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. I don't know what I clicked to just make that happen, sorry. <laughs> Me and Kizana have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, 
Everyone is going to take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Uh, that sounds kind of dull. Jiro! You're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems, it's about performing them. Like you say the lines of the poem, like, Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moments between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now that I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that! Chieko, how do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Huh? You mean me? I'm working super hard on this, you know? I know, I know. I just meant that it's pretty unordin- It's a pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. <laughs> Don't say that, it's embarrassing. Good, he's finally being nice to her. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Ah, I'm so excited! The festival is going to be so much fun! Chieko spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, Jiro, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission, huh? It's been a long time since I spent time with Chieko like this, but in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. A <coughs> loser! So going adventuring with Chieko brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. The two of us enter the classroom. Chieko heads straight to the closet and I follow. Now she's in the closet too. Are there going to be any girls left for me to date after this? Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Chieko pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand too! They're kind of dirty though. Chieko starts pulling various, pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted, you still need to find- Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color! Fine, fine. Her favorite color is pink, by the way. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Ah, oh, I dropped one by accident! Yeah! Chieko bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. Ow, 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 ow! You okay? My forehead! Chieko clutches her forehead. Jeez, Chieko. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Chieko is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. Oh, smooth. Nice. You have to move your hands, Chieko. But it hurts! Just do it for a second. Wow, that is... that is definitely... <laughs> oh, she's in a pose. Not the pose that I expected her to be. That's not usually the pose I make when I accidentally smack my head off of something. Chieko slowly releases her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Sorry, I keep getting distracted looking at her. Uh, with a cute face. Ow! Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Jiro? Where would I even find ice around this time? I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to! I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Even wincing from the pain, Chieko still makes a silly joke. <laughs> what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Okay. I pat Chieko on the shoulder and run out into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter since it will be used as an ice pack rather than to drink, but I know Chieko likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. Well, my Chieko likes strawberry milk, but okay. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Chieko. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Chieko, here. I hand Chieko the bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Chieko opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Chieko, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot! Ah! Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Chieko places the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings! 
Just bear with it. It'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Jiro. This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Huh? What do you mean? You know how I used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah. You don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. Said no guy ever. Oh, I was so focused on video games that I didn't pay attention to the hot anime girl who lives next door and is totally obsessed with me. What's wrong with this guy? Get help. So in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Jiro, I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me, even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. D don't call me that. And I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that what ha that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Jiro, I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll end up, we'll each end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises. She wants you, she's saying she wants to marry you, you dumbass. But, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Chieko has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Kizana, you know? Good luck with that. She's going to see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Chieko hops to her feet. Ah! She clutches her forehead. <laughs> Sorry about that. There's a knocking sound somewhere and I have to go get rid of it, but it's over now. Back to the game. She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I followed Chieko out of the classroom. Chieko plays with her bangs to try to hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the clubroom. Ah, you're back. Good timing. I was just about ready to sh start with sharing our poems. Apparently, I was also just about ready to start having a speech impediment. Huh? Chieko, your forehead. She's fine, don't worry about I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf. Well, anyway. Were you able to find everything we needed? Uh-huh, I have it right. Oh. Chieko fran frantically glances around herself. I forgot all this stuff! Calm down, Chieko. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Jiro. Uh, well, Chieko... I failed to come up with an excuse for Chieko. I made it an adventure! Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too! Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should grab mine. After making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I'll turn to my seat. Once again, I'm trying to get with Kizana, so I'm gonna show her mine show her my poem first. Hi again, Jiro. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. 
as long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Kizana. All right, it's pretty good. It makes me think of Chieko, like the other one that you wrote. You, are t you two are like the dynamic duo. <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. Uh, I'm not shy, it's just... <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone. But Yukiri and Mitsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. Can I? Can I actually... Oh my gosh, actual Kizana doesn't let me talk to her in real life. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no, it, it's nothing like that. It's just that you're gorgeous and perfect. And you're very hard to talk to and easy to talk to at the same time. So it's easy to mess up. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. All these poems are about food. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Okay, alright. So she... She's like... 17, right? Does she have schizophrenia? Is that what this is about? Like all her weird poems and her epiphany? I don't know, I'll figure it out. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway... Here's Kizana's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind, or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> uh, it's doing the breaking the fourth wall thing. I guess that's because uh, I'm about to start getting to the point where I can date different girls and choose different ones, so they have to break the fourth wall and tell me to save. <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Alright, next, Chieko. Jiro, I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Uh, I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too? You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean... You're really the only one who feels that way, so... Ah! No way! Not even Mitsuki? Well, I guess Mitsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well... I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Huh? Well, uh... Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just know that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you have somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking! 
let's not talk about that. <laughs> so yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Huh? I don't know if I understand. <sighs> you never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Chieko? This guy is a dick! Stop calling her stupid! You're obviously trying to get with her, don't insult her! I pat Chieko's head. <laughs> hey! I'm not a kid, you know! Are you sure about that? Mm, maybe. Chieko starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Jiro! Will you give me your poem? I kinda wanna keep it. Huh? Why? Because... First time you've written something for me. <laughs> Chieko, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Ah! I broke my pencil! Chieko hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped, but being inattentive of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. S sorry! It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Chieko clutches the desk beside her to support herself, knees shaking. I I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Chieko. Yeah. I grab Chieko's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh! Sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Alright. Bottles. I pop off my scalp. Jesus Christ. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Oh, okay, okay. You had me in the first half, not gonna lie. <sighs> Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends, each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way, down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams, friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Okay, I know what this poem is about. This poem is about how she always has to be super positive for everyone else, and everyone else, including her boyfriend, treats her like shit. <laughs> Poor thing, I feel bad for her. Holy crap. Chieko, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Kizana taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Come on, dude, she's feeling happy and proud of herself. Just let her have that. You're the reason she feels this way. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helped me... It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic! You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing until I die! <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Chiaco's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times, but seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Alright, Mitsuki. Hmm. 
Well, it's not really any worse than your last one, but I can't really say it's any better either. Whew. Huh. What? Uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Uh, hey, what makes you- Wait, maybe that was a compliment? Aha! Uh -huh. Glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. Uh, that's, uh, some something tells me that Suki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Chieko's poem from yesterday. Huh? You think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Chieko has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so <laughs> fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? Oh no, remember how I joked that Mitsuki was in the closet earlier? I think she has a crush on Chieko. <laughs> it's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers, and I'm gonna tell everyone. Yeah, this is probably about her having a crush and not being able to deal with her own feelings. Sounds like, uh, the stuff that people say about gay people. <laughs> you know, doesn't matter if it's private, doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. <laughs> I think I've cracked the code. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies, and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid! Who cares what someone likes? As long as they're not hurting anyone, it makes them hot and happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least, I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that! I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Alright, now we've got Yukiri. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Jiro. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yukiri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Huh? It's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poems to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings, and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yukiri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The Raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. 
I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife, the very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon is taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic Pavlovian conditioning, I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Okay, so I've got a theory about this one too. She said it was a metaphor, so it's obviously not about a real raccoon. So, she's, she is giving something to someone, and they've become too dependent on her, but it makes her feel too satisfied and important to keep giving them that stuff for her to actually stop. That's why she says, and I feed myself again. Maybe she's in some kind of bad relationship. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying my emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way for me, the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. <laughs> you and Mitsuki wrote about the same thing. <laughs> That's funny. Didn't Mitsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Huh? She, she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She's right! I mean, does she really feel that way? Uh, yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. Well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. Hold on, I've, uh, I've been recording for a while, so I'm gonna stop this one and we'll get into this conversation next time.